What do you get when you take the power of Debian, wrap it with KDE and QT, and have a Xan mod default kernel? You get Nitrix OS. That's what we're taking a look at today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is made possible by the eBuzz Central store. Are you looking for Linux themed apparel and items? Well, this is your one stop shop. We have everything from Arch all the way to Linux Mint. We have t shirts, hoodies, water bottles, stickers, decals you name it, we have it. So zip on over, check out the store, and if you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if there's something you'd like to see on the store that isn't there, let us know in the comments below and we'll add it. Now we're going to zip on over to Nitrix's website, which is nxos.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And it basically just says, Welcome to the NX World. Powered by Debian, KDE Technologies, and QT. And what we're going to do is we're going to zip on down to the release notes because today we're looking at the brand new release, which is 2.0.1. And if you come down, it lets you know that the 5.16.11 Xan mod kernel is now the default in the distribution. They also offer the latest mainline LTS and non-LTS kernels, which are 5.15.25 and 5.16.11. And they also offer the latest Xan mod, which we are talking about, and the Liquorix kernel, which is 5.16.0-11.1. And they also offer Linux Libre LTS and non-LTS kernels. And if we come down to the bottom, it comes with KDE Plasma 5.24.2. It's a customized version that we're going to take a look at here shortly. KDE Frameworks 5.91.0. KDE Gear version 21.12.2. It's got the newest Firefox, LibreOffice, They've also added a package to include UDEV rules. They've included Mesa 22.1 by default, and they want to let you know due to problems that they found with the most recent version of Calamares, we strongly recommend using the manual partitioning. And I can give you an update on that as well because there are issues with Calamares on Manjaro too. So keep your eyes open for that and definitely do your manual partitioning. They've also fixed some following issues, wireless networks, and down here, you've got a place to download. You can go to get the ISO. You can get the torrent. That is all right here. And then your checksums are right here. Now, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to zip on over to the desktop. And if you download Nitrix, throw it on a USB or put it into a virtual machine and boot into it. This is the screen you're met with. You get a single panel up top. You also get the dock down here below. And it's also got the Maui shell, which we will take a look at at the end of the video, which is something that's going to make it really nice to have on tablets or phones or any other touchscreen device. If we come up right, you can see right here, you've got your date and time. You've got your drop down that's got your hidden icons, which is Bluetooth, Night Color Control, Vaults, NX Notifications, KDE Connect, and Clipboard. And as you can tell, this is a customized version of the KDE desktop. But I do like the overall theme right here. I like the way it looks. And if you're not familiar with KDE Connect, you can download the app on your Google or Apple smartphone. And you can actually connect it with your PC and have a lot of control over it. You can use it as a remote control, use it to start and stop media playback. You can answer messages that received on your phone, and you can track missed calls and so much more. So if you're not familiar with KDE Connect, go check it out. Sound, U.S. keyboard layout, printers right here, battery, and then, of course, your networks. This shows that we're on Ethernet. If you right-click on the desktop, you can configure your desktop and wallpaper, display settings. You've got a lot of different things you can do right here. So let's go ahead and configure desktop and wallpaper. And you've got a lot of different wallpapers you can select from right here. Just click on it to change it. And it gives you a different look. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave that one. I did look at this a couple months ago, and a lot of people really did not like the default wallpaper. I do. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one. I think it's pretty. But there's a plethora of different wallpapers here to choose from. Gives you a lot of different looks and a lot of ways to customize the way your desktop looks. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And if you come down to the bottom, you do have a dock. I like the transparency that you see on the dock. And if you click right here on the app launcher, you just click on it, open it up, and it shows you applications that you have on your system at present. If you just click in an open area, you can close that. And then right here, if you click, it actually gives you a place to search for those. We'll close out of that and go back over here. Some of the base apps that you get are Arc, Buho, Clip, 
Firefox browser, your index, install Nitrix, install itch.io, shelf, pics, Noda, which is a good little text editor, NitroShare, which is a way to share files, NX Software Center, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And once you open up the Software Center, you can tell it's got a global menu. So let's go over here and maximize this up so we can see it. And everything that you're going to download on Nitrix OS is an app image. You're not going to have it downloading separate dependencies. It's not going to get it from a repository. You're just basically going to get all images of the application. So no matter what you download, let's say you wanted to get KSNP, you just click on it. And it brings you over here. You've got different app images right here that you can download. That's completely up to you. So that way, you're going to have less breakages. And one of the things and advantages that you get with an app image is the fact that it is pretty much self-contained. You're not relying on other dependencies across the distribution to actually run the application. It downloads everything it needs in a nice little image. You can use it and you have no problems. It's easier to update. Some people complain that it seems to bloat the application a little bit, which means the app image or Snap or flat packs are always bigger than if you just downloaded it and used your operating system dependencies to help run it. I disagree. It may be a hair slower, but I do like the fact that the app image does seem to make your system run cleaner and smoother. And of course, if you wanted to go up here and search for an application, you could just type it in here and do a search and it will find it and then you can download it. What I am going to tell you, if you do run this off of a USB, you will be able to look at those applications. If you run it in VirtualBox, sometimes this is hit and miss. But once you do install it and it refreshes the repositories for NX, you'll be able to search for all the applications that you use. So let's go ahead and close out of the NX Software Center. Let's come back down here. Let's open that back up. You've got LibreOffice right here. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what version of LibreOffice we have. Let's go ahead and maximize that. Let's go ahead and open up Help and About LibreOffice is version 7.3.0.3, so you got the most recent LibreOffice. That's really nice, so we'll go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. Come back down here, and you've got KCalc. You've got Spectacle, which is your screenshot program station, which is your terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, it opens up. Let's go ahead and maximize that so we can see, and let's see if they have HTOP installed, and they do have HTOP installed. At this point right now, I have two CPUs issued to this machine. It's using approximately 50 to 60% of the CPU with just the terminal open. And I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. At present, we are using 1.23 gigabytes of RAM. So that's just a little heavy for me, but we are in a virtual machine. It isn't installed, so you could run into a lot of those issues. You're not going to really get a good feel of what kind of resources you're going to be using until you actually install it or maybe run it from a USB. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's drop back down here. We've got system monitor, system settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And when your settings open up, you can see this layout right here. Now, if you're familiar with KDE, if you just go up here and click on that, it gives you the old way that you're used to seeing it in most KDE distributions. So if you want to change that back, you can switch it to an icon view. You can pretty much change it however you want to. Let's go ahead and maximize that. And you can see right here, you've got your notifications appearance. You've got a lot of control how you can customize it and obviously set things up the way you want them. And let's go ahead and go back and close. Okay, there was a little white area up here and I couldn't access the close button. So maybe because I'm running in a virtual box. Okay, let's come back down to the bottom. Let's open up our file. And here is your file manager. And as you notice, as we maximize it, it's got a different layout that you're used to seeing with some file managers. You've got your favorites right here, your tagged, your home, downloads, documents, music, pictures. You've got icons as opposed to actual words here. And then, of course, you've got your bookmark trash, network, removable media, and then your drives. And then your home folders right here. It's just a lightweight file manager that makes things easy to do and just pretty much stays out of your way. So we will go ahead and close out of that. Come back down to the bottom. You got your application software center. We already looked at that. Firefox, Noda, that's your text editor. Then you've got a video player. And then, of course, your system settings and your trash can. Now, what I want to do real quick is let's go ahead and take a look at the Maui shell. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And we're going to want to log out. 
And up here, instead of plasma, I'm going to drop this down to CAX X11. And we're going to go ahead and log in. And there is your Maui shell. So let's see if they've made any changes since the last time we took a look at this. I like the layout of it. Your notifications are right here. Then your time and date are right there. You've got your calendar as well. And then if you come over to the right, let's go ahead and extend that out. You've got user. You've got quit, restart, or shut down. And if you have a music player playing in the background, it would show up here. And then right here, you've got your volume setting, brightness level, microphone setting. I like that. Or you can switch to audio. Okay. That's pretty awesome. And there's your brightness there. And then down here would be the volume of your microphone. Okay, let's go ahead and go up there. And then let's go ahead and check this out. You've got your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Pine phone, and then microphone, screenshot, night mode if you want that. Then your settings right here. And then, of course, if you wanted to make that smaller, you could. And then we come down to the bottom. This should give you your apps. And these are separated. You've got all application, development, graphics, internet, utilities, system, settings menu, your office, and then multimedia. Now, do you have a second page of these? No, you don't. And then if you open this one up, show desktop, this will be able to clear or close out open applications. So, the Maui shell is still looking good. It's got a long way to go, guys. Um, but let me know what you think about the Maui shell down in the comments below. I want to go back over here, and let's see how hard it is to switch back to the Plasma desktop. I guess the shutdown isn't working, so we will have to end the... Okay, quit session, quit. Sorry about that. It lagged a little bit, slowed me down. So, let's go ahead and go back over here and switch back to the Plasma. And log in. And it saved my background, and the top panel comes back, and the dock in the bottom comes back. So we're back in the Plasma desktop. So that's pretty much a quick look at the newest release of Nitrix Linux, a powerful operating system using the base of Debian, using the power of KDE and Qt, and the Xan Mod kernel. I don't really think you could go wrong. What do you think? Is this something you might download, throw on a USB, or put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, when you get a chance, zip on over, take a look at the eBus Central store. Give me some feedback. Is there something you would like to see on the store that's not there? Let me know about it. Drop that in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can become a member to the channel, buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.